The Second Law of Thermodynamics, Spontaneous Reactions and Entropy. Okay, so now we're going to start talking about something called a spontaneous process. So this type of process or reaction, in the case of chemical reactions, happens automatically and it doesn't require an input of energy in order to occur. And these spontaneous processes have a great tendency to proceed in one direction. So they fit greatly favor one direction. Now let's remind ourselves of the first law of thermodynamics. And we talked about this earlier in the course. The transfer of energy between a chemical reaction system, that's the system, and its surroundings is either going to occur as work or heat. And in the process, energy will be conserved. Now, energy is conserved in spontaneous processes, but the first law doesn't tell us whether a given process is going to be spontaneous in the forward direction or not. And so what we're going to do throughout this unit is figure out how we can determine whether a process is spontaneous. Let's also remind ourselves of enthalpy, because this is going to come back when we start talking about the free energy, delta G. Now, enthalpy is half of the story in predicting whether a process is going to be spontaneous. So exothermic reactions, these, of course, release heat. So we just are reminded of that. And they're spontaneous according to delta H. Now, endothermic reactions absorb heat. And we think of these processes as non-spontaneous according to delta H. As I mentioned, enthalpy isn't the only factor to consider. If we want to predict whether a process is spontaneous, we need to think about something called the entropy. And this is another thermodynamic state function. Now, what is entropy? Entropy can be kind of hard to understand. And basically, it's a measure of the disorder or randomness that is found in a system, maybe the number of possibility states or the possible arrangements. And we call these microstates for some given state. And in the second video in this series, we'll do an example and demonstrate how that works. So here's an example to get you started and get you thinking about microstates and beginning to understand what these are. Now, in this picture, we have 20 coins. And you can see that some of them are face up, heads up, and some of them are tails up, OK? And out of the 20 coins shown, 10 of them are heads up, and obviously the other 10 are tails. Now, a state, so a macro state here, of the whole 20 coins with half of them heads up, that's a certain macro state. Now, within the macro state, if we start caring about which coin is heads up or tails up, and so if we were to change them, we could do different arrangements of heads up and tails up and still have the same fraction of them heads up. So for instance, if I took these three tails up, turned them over, and then they were heads up, and then in exchange, I'll turn these three heads up to tails up. So we still have 10 coins heads up, but now we have a different microstate, a different arrangement of the coins either heads up or tails up. But overall, the macrostate is the same, which is 10 coins heads up and 10 coins tails up. Entropy is related to these microstates. The greater the number of possible arrangements for some state, the higher the entropy. So basically, another way to say that is that the more microstates there are for a given macrostate, the greater the disorder. So we're going to talk about how that comes in to talking about entropy and spontaneity. There are also two types of entropy or disorder. One is positional disorder. So that is the distribution of molecules, atoms, ions, whatever you're talking about, particles in general, in space. So that's positional disorder. Another type of disorder is thermal disorder. And this has to do with the energy states among the molecules. Now, this is pretty complicated, so we're not going to go 
deeply into the wise and, and detailed hows, but we are going to talk about it in general and how to predict entropy of a given system depending on what is happening with the temperature. Finally, the second law of thermodynamics, one way to express it, is that the total entropy change of the universe for any spontaneous process is positive. So in other words, entropy increases for a spontaneous process. So delta S, that change in entropy, is positive for a spontaneous process. The change in entropy of the universe is just the sum of the change in entropy of the system plus the surroundings. Okay, so next we're going to talk about entropy and microstates.